today. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Oh, good, good to be here again. Yeah, it's so nice to have you. So we left off last week with organizing our kids. I've had some good feedback about this. Oh, good. People awesome. really wanting to take it all in, get their kids in line, get themselves in line. Awesome, <laughs> great, I love it. Yeah, so we are continuing the discussion on helping our kids get organized. And you really pointed out last week that we want to get our kids involved in the conversation, not just telling them what to do. Right, you want to get them involved in the process because they're going to be the ones that are maintaining these systems. So it kind of takes the pressure pressure off of you of going having to go and straighten their rooms and tidy up after them when they create those systems themselves it's going to help them move forward and, and really work better and have more time and have let you have more free time to concentrate on other things super important to get your kids involved in the process rather than just lecturing them so yes. you have five areas that we're going to focus on today yes. the first one is the bathroom now, if we could all be so lucky to have a kid's bathroom and an adult bathroom, yeah. I know I didn't have my own bathroom. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. No. <laughs> but let's talk about this, how we can get our kids organized in the bathroom. Sure, and I do have some, some families that do have the kids have their own bathroom. I was in a couple this week, actually. And what happens is when the bathroom's unorganized, it takes kids longer to get ready in the morning because they're touching all different things that they don't need to find the thing that they do need. So having really good systems, and it's just a matter of containing the things that are in the, bed, the bathroom now, like hair accessories, um, oh, yeah. you know, the hair products, things like that, whatever it is that they're using in the morning, containing them. But I have a really good tip. One bathroom I was in this week, the mom said the daughter was so excited she got mason jars to organize everything. Oh, cute. Too. But, but there, oh, yeah, yeah, wait, there's a, there's a little hitch to that. Okay. So she had her headbands in the mason jar. So my question immediately, I looked at him like, that looks great, but how long does it take her to get the headband that she needs? She has to take all the ones out to get to the one at the bottom, yeah. and now she's just, she's in a rush, so she left all the ones she just took out on the counter, and now she has the one she has, and she moves away from the spot, but now she's got a mess. So I always look at it, I'm like, yeah, this looks really pretty, but again, organizing isn't about all about getting things to look pretty, but being functional and being efficient. So I suggested let's get her something where all the headbands are laid out so that way she can actually go to the one she needs, grab it, and go about her day as opposed to touching five that she doesn't need before she gets to the one she does need. So, <laughs> yeah, so just little things like that will help them become more efficient. So, yeah, the bathroom streamlining what they're doing, decluttering it, and creating those little organized systems in the bathroom will shave time off their, their morning, and now you're not running after them saying, why aren't you ready for school on time, you know, they were because they were fussing in the bathroom, so... Is it good to have, you know, containers or whether it's drawers or sectionals maybe in those drawers? Yeah. Is it good to, you know, work with your kids, maybe make a run to Target or mm -hmm. Walmart or the container store or something like that and, and pick things out with your kids to say what looks good to you, what works for you, yes. that kind of thing? Yeah, taking inventory first of what they have, then physically measuring that space, that drawer, length, width, and height, so make, you're making sure that drawer organizer does fit take those measurements with you and then when you go to the store you're just reining in on the ones that fit in that space so the container stuff can be so overwhelming oh, yeah. but you know where to go now and you're just looking at what fits so yeah so we're depending on how if you have elastics those could go in like a little sectional in the drawer or you could do something hanging on the wall whatever it is think about functionality again and being efficient with that Perfect. yeah yeah Okay, and uh, you said declutter, categorize, itemize everything mm -hmm. um, to make those things easier. Yeah, yeah. So we'll kind of touch base on those. Um, let's talk about games. I know when I was a kid, yeah. I had every game imaginable, mm -hmm. and it was the best. I don't know, do kids still have board games anymore? They do. Or is do. it more of a digital kind of thing? Or I've seen a lot of games. So, and again, it's how do we contain them? It's awesome. I mean, they want to play with them. Maybe half the pieces are missing because they just got thrown around. So, I me mean, having those categories of games and having a designated spot for them and everybody knows where that is and they go back when they're done using them, then I find that there may be different age kids in the house. So, some have their own games. Yeah. Separate them out. Put one child's games that they play with in one area and another in another area. So, that way, they're separated out. So, when that child needs to go to her games or his games, they can go to that section. So, now they're not rifling through everybody's games to get what they need. And even the adult games, keep those separate from the kids game about categorizing them all efficiency again streamlining and saving time in the home and are we looking at putting them in all one closet are we looking at a toy box are we looking at you know we're we looking at one, one room of the house for these kind of things yeah depending if you have a playroom where they could be stored or a closet a spare closet where they can go or if they need to go in the room that the child's in if, it, if you have one child and you want to keep them all together it's a preference so I would talk Talk about it with your kids, talk about it with everybody in the house, see where the best place is to store those and where everybody's going to go to them when they need them. Okay. 
Um, and you said just go through everything and make piles. We love making piles. Yeah, categorize everything out, make your piles, and then get organized. Then talk about, all right, we have these games here. We have this space. How do we want to function? How do we want to grab? It's all about asking those questions. All right, so moving on from games, and really, bef actually, before we move on from yeah. games, we can also think about, like you said, the pieces of the games mm -hmm. and video games, too. Is that a whole nother section? Whole nother, yeah, you want to keep all the video games together. Puzzles, I find sometimes the boxes end up breaking, they even, so maybe put them in a steel tight Ziploc bag with the name of what puzzle is on it and maybe a picture of it inside the Ziploc bag and keep the oh, boxes ripped. that's a good idea. So, yeah, you can keep track of it that way. So now you don't have all flimsy boxes around with the pictures in there with the pieces labeled on the Ziploc bag. And know what, which piece goes with what. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Yes. All right, let's move on to dance and sports gear. We kind of touched on this a little bit before, but your stuff can be all over the place. A knee pad here, a helmet here, a, a one Shoes. piece here, a shoe. It can be all over the place. Yeah, so keeping these things categorized, whether they live in the child's room or a hall closet, wherever it may be, keep them categorized so when the child comes home, everything's together. If the laundry has to be done, make sure when the laundry's clean, it goes back into that bag if that's the one they're traveling with or it goes back in their drawers. Where So that way, when again, efficiency, when you're leaving to go to a sport game, you're not 10 minutes late because you forgot a shoe back in the closet. <laughs> So just getting your and getting your kids to like take ownership of that bag. So again, it's taking off you. It's on the child of okay, I'm ready for my. I have everything I need. The bag's there and I'm out the door. So the parents aren't on top of the the child all the time. You know where you know give them that the kids the responsibility of maintaining that bag and keeping track of it. Could a checklist be beneficial? Oh, this? great. So say you have a ballet or a dance bag. Yeah. So making a checklist, a laminated checklist. Perfect. Like I like it. Yeah, that's perfect. Have that, have it in the child's room or wherever near the bag so that when they go, they know everything's in that bag. And again, it's taking the pressure off the parents that have to keep worrying about whether they have this bag or not. That we have, we're not worrying about enough stuff today. You know, <laughs> or a, a soccer bag. Okay, so you go through the checklist right. and here's my ball, here's my shin guards, here's, and then then you're not running around looking for the shingers, or maybe you are. Right. <laughs> and hopefully eventually they'll learn it by heart, and then they won't need to know what they need anymore. Like, they get used to it, and that way they don't have to function with them anymore on the list. But yeah. I like that. Great. Okay. So then we're looking at, oh, this is a fun one that can yes. end up all over the house, uh, are your arts and crafts supplies. Oh, getting big one. This is a big one. So I have clients that dedicate a small room just for arts and crafts. Wow. Get it organized. Again, take inventory of what's in the space. I find crayons, markers, whatever it is all over the home. So you want to take inventory of all these crafts, get them all to one area, categorize it, itemize it, and find good uh, containers for these products. So that way when craft time comes, everything comes out and then everything can go back. Or if you have that room, keep everything categorized. And again, teach your kids the, why they have to put things back. Not you have to put them back, but the benefits of it. You're going to find things when you need them next time. I don't have to, have to run to the store and buy you a new pack of crayons because you know where the other pack of crayons is. Little things like that. So, and that, those rooms too, those arts and crafts rooms can become a distraction. Oh, definitely. Because there's so much stuff in that room and when there's chaos, you can't focus. So even throughout the house with kids, the kids today, they get distracted very easily. They want to keep focused when they're doing homework or whatever it is. So the less distractions they have around them, the easier it's going to be for them and the more likely they're going to be to stay on task when there aren't that, those distractions and chaos in the home. And there's not the crazy scissors sitting on their desk because they know, oh, I don't, want, I don't need to cut with the crazy scissors right, right. now. I need to focus on my homework. Exactly, yes. <laughs> we know that the arts and crafts are put away uh, in a safe designated space. Right. Um, and you said other spaces outside of the bedroom. So any spaces, any other space where your child may be living in, whether it's a dining room, they're working out of the dining room with homework, whether there's another space in the home they're trying to take over the den, you don't want to let all their stuff spill all over the home. I mean, it, it does because they're kids, right? Yeah, and it's okay, but when they have those really good systems in place, that tends not to happen because there's a home for everything, there's a place for everything. So it's easy for them to just stay in those one areas that they're, they're, they're working in. So getting those systems in place and helping maintain the organization. And if they have those steps, if they have the place for their arts and crafts, if they have the place for their sports stuff, if they have the place for their games, it really shouldn't be spilling everywhere. Well, exactly. Those systems are in place. And even being mindful when they, it's all about, I've been talking this about this a lot, mindfulness. Like when you come in, don't tell them to drop their bags right at the doorway. 
maybe put them in their room on a hook so that's where the bag lives so now they're not running around the house where did I drop it when I walked in yeah. well it has a place in the bedroom on a hook and that's where it, where it's where it lives when you come in so many times you'll see people running late because of that they're running around the house looking for these things because there's no system it could be as easy as putting it on a hook and that's where it stays and when it comes home that's where it goes and that way that's going to save you time and stress think about the stress parents have of running after their kids that are disorganized trying to find things and I know everybody can associate with this because so many of my clients you're running late because you're trying to find these things but when there's these systems in place it releases that stress level and so many people will say I don't have time to get organized I don't have time to get my kids organized but they don't realize the time that they're wasting that and the energy that they're wasting and the money that they're wasting because they're not organized so if everybody has three hours in a day it's whether you make it a priority or not Perfect. That makes so much sense. Yeah. All right, Kristen, thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us. We're getting our kids in line and uh, moving forward to the next topic soon to come. Yes. All right. Thanks, Molly. Thank you, Kristen, so right. much. Organizing in Rhode Island, and you can find her weekly topics at any time on golocalprov.com.